Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. I'm always an open book with regards to my struggles with certain aspects of photography. And I've mentioned this on more than one occasion that correcting white balance is by far the most difficult aspect of photo editing for me. And after years of struggle, creating many overly warm and overly cool photographs with horrendous green and, and magenta tints, attempting uh, multiple different approaches and finally settling on a white balance workflow that works best. I, I now feel that I, I've solved the puzzle, if you will, and am more confident than ever when it comes to selecting not only a, a correct white balance, but also, and most importantly, a white balance that complements the scene best because a correct white balance doesn't mean it's always the, the best white balance for a particular photograph. And in this video, I'll review the, the ins and outs of selecting a white balance, why we should do it in the first place, the different approaches available along with the workflow that I found works best using Lightroom. So to jump right into it, this is a, a recent photograph from the Out of Olympic event. Myself and uh, Nick Page took our group to uh, this absolutely incredible location. I'm a, I'm a freak when it comes to waterfalls, and this one right here was just something that uh, I found it to be extremely, extremely special. I really enjoyed our, our time at this spot. So why do we do, why do we correct white balance in the first place? So the short story is that different types of light creates different colored light. So sunlight generally creates a warmer or a more, more orange light, where shade light generally creates a cooler or more blue color cast to a scenario. So this, that's probably the most, um, most common character or common scenario that uh, we run into as photographers when it comes to correcting white balance. And the ultimate goal is to really neutralize that color cast. Our, our eyes are very good at adapting to these types of uh, colored light scenarios in the real world, but our cameras struggle a little bit. So the ultimate goal is to just kind of neutralize that color, color cast across your entire photograph. So if we come up here, temperature, you know, you only have two options. You can either warm up your scene by moving it to the right, or you can cool your scene down by moving it to the left. You reset that tint. You can have, uh, you can move it to the right and add more magenta tint to your scene, or you can move it towards the left and add more green tint to your scene. Let me switch this back to as shot. Now, when it comes to updating white balance using Lightroom, there is four different methods to, uh, to, to go about it. Two of the methods are by far the most popular approaches. The other two I don't believe are used too terribly often, but I'm just gonna run through them really quickly. So the most common approach is to probably come up here and grab the, uh, the eyedrop picker or the color picker tool, whatever you wanna call it. And what's kind of neat is if you look up here at the thumbnail, as I move this uh, color picker around, you can see that it gives you a real time, I guess, uh, look as to what that uh, white balance will be depending on where you have the, uh, the the eyedropper so if i bring it over here to this green area you can see what it's doing it's adding a ton of magenta to the overall photograph if i move it up here towards this the trunk of the tree you can see that the photograph is very cool very blue now i can bring it over here towards a more neutral color the water which definitely has a more realistic white balance to it but it's kind of neat to just be able to move this all over your scene to see exactly where you want to place it but the ultimate goal here is to find a neutral color, usually white or some type of a, a lighter gray works best. So I'm just gonna try it right here. And you can see that it went ahead and adjusted the white balance right there. And that is probably, in my opinion, one of the, the, the better approaches. It's not the, 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 I guess, complete workflow that I go through now, but that is definitely one of the more common ways to adjust white balance. Now, another very popular approach, I should say, is let me just reset this back to as shot is to just come up here drop this down and select auto whoops wrong one auto and i think that usually does a pretty good job but from my experience lightroom a lot of times will make the uh, i guess the scene a little bit too warm so uh, i i think auto is good for kind of a a jumping off point or to use as a leading indicator if you will as to which way the uh, the white balance should go but that is definitely another more popular approach is to use the auto function. Now there's a bunch of different presets you can use. You can come down here and you can select daylight, which daylight will add, um, it'll definitely make it warmer. You can come down here to cloudy and you can see that this, the temperature is going up in increments of 1000. So at daylight, we're at 5,500. Cloudy, we are at 6,500 shade we are at 7500 and as you go from daylight to cloudy to shade it just gets warmer and warmer and warmer you can come down here to fluorescent and that's going to be a much cooler color temperature right there you can come up here to tungsten which is generally the coolest color temperature 
right there and you can see that that temperature is moving down moving more towards the cooler side so tungsten's 2850 shade i'm sorry not shade fluorescent is 3800 and then of course you have flash and custom as well so let me just come up here and put this back to as shot and then the fourth uh and i think it is for the the fourth uh possible way to adjust white balance inside of lightroom is to just completely do it by by eye and for those that have that type of um sorcery and that type of ability to to do it right out of the gate by eye i commend you i wish i had that skill set i don't I have to go through a kind of a multi-step process which i'll get to in just a moment but if you just want to do it by eye you can definitely go about that you can just come right up here and just start moving this to uh, whatever type of a uh, color temperature you think this particular photograph should have but I think that is definitely the more difficult approach to go. So let me put this back to as shot. Now, as far as my new white balance editing workflow, this is something that I've been using for a couple of years now, and I think it is by far the, the easiest approach to go to. It, it takes an additional just a couple seconds to go through this, but I think it creates consistently the best white balance in my opinion. And it's a little bit, I um, it's, it's, I guess it's a two-step process, but I think that uh, you'll definitely enjoy it. It has definitely helped me out. Now, when I'm on location, I always shoot an auto white balance and just kind of let the camera pick whatever white balance uh, it deems uh, uh, is appropriate for a particular scene. And I also always want to make sure that I'm shooting in RAW because when you shoot in RAW, you definitely have the most flexibility to adjust that white balance in post as opposed to if you're photographing in JPEG. The, uh, the amount of latitude that you have in post-processing is substantially limited versus raw, and I know we all know that. But I always shoot in auto white balance. And this is a photograph from my recent trip to Indonesia. We were on the sailboat sailing through the uh, Indonesian islands. I think absolutely in, uh, incredible scene. This is, a, you can see it's a raw file and HDR blend with very minimal adjustments applied to it. So what I always want to do is I want to go through my white balance workflow pretty early on in my, uh, in my editing setup because uh, if, you, you know, if you wait to the last minute to adjust your white balance or wait till you've already applied all of your settings and then you go ahead and adjust your white balance, you might find that you have to go back and adjust a ton of other settings as well. So I usually try and adjust the white balance fairly early on throughout my post-processing process, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, I'm going to grab the, uh, the color picker, and I'm going to find something as close to white as I possibly can. Now, obviously, the sails of this sailboat are, are white. I know they're white. I was there. I saw that they were white. I saw the, the, uh, the crew members putting them up. They were completely stark white. But these uh, sails are being illuminated by the sunlight through here. So if I were to use this as my neutral target, you can see that it, it cooled the, the uh, overall image down to a point to where it was a little bit unrealistic. So I'm going to come back up here and bring this back to as shot. And I'm going to find something a little bit more neutral. So either this area here or maybe this area here, I think it's going to be as neutral as I can get. And you can see what that did. It brought it up to a, the, the temperature up to 5,500 and the tint up to plus 16. Now the real trick to this is to go ahead and take the saturation and bring it up all the way to positive 100. It's gonna make your photo look like complete garbage, but it's all gonna make sense here in just a moment. So I'm gonna come over here to saturation. I'm gonna bring this up to positive 100. And as you can expect, the image looks absolutely awful. But this is a great way to see any type of color cast or, or any type of overly dominant colors throughout your scene. And as we look at this photograph right now, we can tell that it's a little bit too warm. The orange tones are definitely overbearing versus the cooler tones. And we want to kind of balance that out or neutralize that a little bit. So with the cut with the saturation up to 100, I can now bring this down. So we're going to bring the temperature down quite a bit to maybe about maybe right around here, I think looks pretty good. Do we want to do anything with the tint? Maybe to a point right here. And that's a good point. With regards to tint, I think temperature, you move the temperature slider around much more in a more extreme fashion to the left and to the right versus the tint. From my experience in the, the many photographs that I've edited over the years, the tint is, just, is moved a very, very small amount to the left or to the right in comparison to the temperature. So I just wanted to, to bring that up real quick. So I think that this looks pretty good. And basically now, so, so these yellow tones here throughout the entire photograph aren't nearly as overbearing as they were before. The, the amount of um, warmer tones versus the amount of cooler tones is much more in balance and much more in harmony uh, with this type of a white balance adjustment versus before. So now we're gonna take the saturation. I'm just gonna double click the word saturation, let this reset. 
And this looks like a much more correct white balance. Let me just hit Command Z to see where we started. So, uh, whoop, I'm sorry, go back to as shot. So this is where it started. Let me take the saturation down. So we were right here. We're gonna go back up here to the color picker. Do this one more time. Grab this, select that, take the saturation to 100. We're gonna bring the color temperature down to about right here. And we're gonna bring this tint up just a touch and then bring this to this level right here. And I think that that looks much, much better. Let's toggle the entire edit on and off. So this is where it started. And this is where we're at right now. This is before and this is after. Got another good example right here of this. So a few moments ago when we were, when I was kicking off this video, I talked about the correct white balance. And I throw this up in air quotes simply because the correct white balance, there is a technical correct way to do it, but it's not always the best white balance for a particular scene. Generally speaking, I usually do try and find a very neutral white balance, but I also want to try and replicate what I experienced when I was on location. I think this is a good example of the Golden Gate Bridge. This is clearly captured during blue hour and everything has this nice, be nice, beautiful blue light to it. But if I come over here and I just hit auto, you can see that it warmed everything up. And that's what happens a lot of times with blue hour photography. Lightroom or whatever post-processing software you're using thinks that the image is much cooler than it should be and it really, really warms it up. Well, if you're capturing a nice, beautiful, calm, ethereal, blue light photograph, you really don't want that to be very warm. One, you, you, you captured it for that blue light, and two, you experience that blue light when you're on location. So I kind of do it with a grain of salt a little bit, so I always try to create a, a neutral uh, white balance, but also try and accurately replicate what I felt when I was on location. So in this scenario, I definitely would not do auto. This is a JPEG, by the way, but I just thought this was a great example of it. Now I wanna run through this quick example here as well. This is from my recent trip to uh, to Bali as well. Uh, this is a, uh, a, a, once again, another HDR raw file and with very, very minimal edits. So I'm gonna run through this scenario a little bit quicker, but I'm gonna go through that same workflow that I started off with with the, uh, the previous photograph. So in this image here, there really isn't a good white point. So um, these, I think the tops of these houses are kind of gray a little bit. This is, eh, there's just, there isn't a really good area in this photograph, which is why I picked this one to use the color picker. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put this back here and I'm gonna go ahead and hit auto. So when I can't find a good neutral location to drop the uh, the white balance tool on, I'll just go ahead and use the auto function and then go through that my same workflow. So I have it set at auto here. I'm gonna take the saturation. I'm gonna bring it up all the way to 100 and you can see what that looks like here. So I'm gonna kind of cool it down a little bit because it definitely looks a little bit too warm now. So I'm gonna cool it down to maybe somewhere around here and there's definitely a lot of green in this photograph. You know, if I move the, the tint towards the left, you can see that green definitely becomes more overpowering. I think I'm gonna bring it more towards magenta, just a touch to about right there looks pretty good. And I'm gonna double click saturation just to reset it. And there we go right there. And I'm gonna to toggle the before and after. So this is where the image started, which is raw. And this is where we're at right now. So this is before and after, before and after after and this particular image is a very difficult photograph to white balance you know we have a ton of grass within the uh, the photograph so there's naturally going to be a lot of green you have the sun rising through the the white fog so there's a a lot of um, different factors or different colored light in play here so this is definitely a more difficult photograph to white balance plus the fact that there isn't a real good neutral um, uh, color anywhere in the photograph to drop the eyedropper on so it's kind of like the uh, the perfect storm if you will so that's why i wanted to use this photograph and and now that I look at it a little bit, I think there might be just a touch too much of that magenta tint. So I might just bring it back to a level about right there. But I think that that looks much, much better. And if I take that saturation all the way up, it now looks much more even. There, doesn't, there isn't so much one color dominating the overall photograph. Of course, the green grass is the most dominant color, but that's a color that's actually in the photograph. That's not a color of any particular light. So I think the white balance has been neutralized in this particular scenario. So now I will bring it back to the saturation, back to zero. So that's the workflow that I have been going through and it really, really has helped me out. And the real key is either start off with auto or start with the eyedropper, go ahead and get that white balance set, 
take that saturation all the way to positive 100 and then look for those dominant colors and then try and balance them out. If there's a, if it looks extremely yellow and orange and warm, you definitely want to cool that down. If it looks way, way too cool, you definitely might want to warm that up. But the ultimate goal is just to get those dominant colors more in harmony, more in balance, if you will. So hopefully that was helpful. And before I do wrap up this week's video, I just want to say a big thanks to the longtime sponsor of the channel, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a robust and beautiful online platform to develop your website. You can showcase your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and display your work using customizable galleries in order to make it your own. And with Squarespace's online store feature, you'll have access to all the tools you'll need to start selling your physical, digital, or service products online immediately. You can even use Squarespace's new asset library so you can upload, organize, and access all your content from a single place in order to easily find and use them across the entire Squarespace platform. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I hope that that information was helpful. This is a video I have been wanting to make for a number of years now, but I just did not feel confident that I had a good workflow that worked for my work, for my process that I wanted to share with you all, but I have never felt as confident as I do now when it comes to correcting white balance. And I wanted to share it with you all today. So if you have any questions, please leave those in the comment, comment section below, and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as humanly possible. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you checking out this week's video and spending a little bit of time with me here today, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.